These larvae began casting their nets millions of years ago. Although fishing is an art for man, we have to recognize that somebody else had the idea first. In any case, the net comes from an invention that's even older, fabric. The Silk Road was the longest trading road in history and linked cultures for centuries. No other animal species has marked so much the path for mankind as this silkworm has. In the last 5,000 years, man has torn the precious treasure of silk from these worms. For these worms, it was not enough to produce a harness-like thread or a net-like mesh. They wanted something else to protect them during their metamorphosis, something more compact, a resistant, light, and insulating mesh. Three features that chemists have tried to reproduce in modern synthetic fabrics with more or less success. Nowadays, there's no doubt that the future of these light-colored worms can be better found among cold test tubes than among romantic Asian landscapes. Scientists, fed up with looking for synthetic fibers similar to silk, have found in genetic engineering their ideal ally to turn silkworms into the main characters that synthesize colored threads with improved properties. They are studying the possibility of inserting a spider gene in the worm to have it produce silk with spidroin, the protein that gives spider webs their strength. If it worked, we could manufacture parachutes or bulletproof vests from silkworm cocoons. It is also likely that science will not have enough with the kilometer length of each cocoon thread, and scientists will end up producing new worm species that produce more silk and naturally eat much less. While we wait for such a day, however, nothing can replace such a weaver and its precious material, silk. Birds also weave, and some of them, like this reinita from Costa Rica, do it really well. This species is very skilled with its beak. Among vertebrates, there are not very many that weave with the same level of quality and complexity as that which these birds achieve in their nests. Each knot and bow are designed to give the structure enough strength to support the weight of the family. Strength, that's the key to success. And not every plant fiber can supply it. Most birds choose the building materials for their nests very carefully. Their own safety and their chick's safety demand it. Threads must be strong as well as flexible, so they won't break when intertwined. The best choice is tender green branches and long leaves. When nests are completed and the fibers dry up, then each basket will get rigid enough to stand incubation and chick raising. However, as every expert engineer knows, it's better to test the work. This is a strange way to control how much weight the structure can withstand, and there's no doubt it's a safe way. There are weaving birds all over the world, and in many places they have inspired basket weavers. Human baskets, like those of birds, answer to certain specific needs, and their design depends on the plant material they are made of. But the basic idea is always the same. There are some birds that are really skillful with their beaks, and their name shows it, the weaver birds. This colorful male is a gendarme weaver bird from the southern plains of Africa. In spite of its beauty, its brightly colored feathers alone would not attract females 
if the male did not show its skill with fibers. The most important thing in this kind of mesh is that the point of union between the branch and the nesting structure be well made. A badly made stitch could spoil its efforts. The rest is just hard work and skill. Our male has already built other nests on the same tree and it seems to be making headway. It has a good harem and seems to want to build some more homes. Once again, the materials must be carefully chosen because a dry twig cannot bend enough without breaking. Before the watchful gaze of a new female, our weaver works with its beak, trying not to disappoint her. And you must agree that keeping its balance in these conditions is admirable. After many trips and threads put in place, the nest begins to take shape. But a nest without a mate is nothing. So our bird is showing off with its beautiful dance to try to draw a mate. Year after year, the same process is repeated since ancient times. But what led these little tailors to weave two fibers the very first time? The first materials and techniques that man used to weave were similar to those employed by animals. However, the simple mesh of leaves and plants turned into silk, linen, cotton, or wool cloth, and facilitated the birth of an art that nowadays produces very different fashions. It started from a simple principle, intertwining, knotting, and joining loose fibers. Animals reached it through evolution. Man used his brain and as on many other occasions, learn to do it by watching nature.